Hey everybody, how you doing? Shula Ruler here. Happy New Year. It's been a while since I recorded some videos, so I just wanted to get on here and start making some new content. Um, ideally, what I want to start out with today is just going through some general branch circuit calculations, things like that, where we're going to use Section 4 in the Canadian Electrical Code. One thing I will point out, we are now in the 2018 Canadian Electrical Code, so some of my previous videos, while still applicable for the most part, will need to be cross-referenced with new code to ensure they're still valid. Okay, so again, thanks for joining me here. Um, we're going to start out with just a regular branch circuit calculation, which is from section 4004, and we're going to apply all the tables where we would use um, <clears throat> for sizing, different conductors, things like that. So we're going to start out with a fairly basic one here. We're going to start out with, say, our electrical panel, switch over to ourselves a panel here and we're just going to draw a branch circuit out to generic load and we'll say this is a 72 amp non-continuous load and we're going to use 75 degree termination temperatures on that load fed from a panel we're going to size both the branch circuit conductor as well as the breaker that protects it Okay, so if we remember, branch circuit is the portion of a circuit from the final overcurrent device to the point of utilization. So on our panel, we're also going to use 75 degree termination temperatures. Okay, <clears throat> so when we start out with a branch circuit calculation, the first thing we always want to ask ourselves is number one, continuous or non-continuous? Okay. If it is non-continuous, if it's given in the question that it's non-continuous, we don't have to worry about any of the continuous rules that apply. If it is continuous, which we'll deal with in another video, that's where we would start to think about whether we need to apply that 80% correction factor. Okay, so in this question, we're dealing with a non-continuous load, so we're not going to worry about that at the moment. Okay, so next thing that I'm going to do is figure out, after I've determined that it's non-continuous, we're going to look for termination temperatures. Okay, so 4-006 sub rule 1 tells us that if we are looking for, if we're dealing with termination temperatures, we're always going to look at the lowest termination temperature. That's going to help us determine where we go when we get to our tables 1, 2, 3, or 4 as far as determining ampacity of conductors. So in this case, we have 75 degrees. In this case, we have 75 degrees here. Because it's not stated, our conductor insulation is going to be RW90 XLPE and we're going to say this is an unjacketed as well, okay? Which means on our conductor, we have a 90 degree insulation. So our insulation is rated for 90 degrees. However, our termination temperatures at our loads and our panel are both 75 degrees rated, okay? So 4006 sub row 1 says we're going to use the lowest temperature, which means we're going with the 75 degrees. So that in mind, we are going to head to 4004 sub rule 1 first of all which tells us if we have copper conductors we're going to head to table 1 or 2 depending on the installation in this case because it doesn't tell us again we're going to say this is in conduit with no more than three current carrying conductors I'm just going to call those current carrying conductors there we go okay so based off that we are going to go to table 2 and table two, this is where we need to determine what the lowest temperature is, because this is what's going to impact where we choose our conductor from. So in this example, because we have 75, 75, 90, we're going to disregard the 90 and go with the 75 degrees as our lowest termination temperature. So table two, in the 75 degree column, we're going to go down until we find that conductor large enough to handle our 72 amp load, which in this case works out to be a number four aug conductor that has an ampacity of 85 amps. Okay, so we've got our branch circuit conductor selected. Now we're gonna go and size our overcurrent device. So when we're selecting our overcurrent device, we need to keep in mind 14-104 sub rule one, which tells me I'm going to try to predict this 85 ampacity conductor with an 85 amp overcurrent, except an 85 amp overcurrent doesn't exist when we go to table 13. Table 13 is what we're going to utilize as our distributor as far as overcurrent devices. So when we go to table 13, 
The only thing we have available is an 80 amp and a 90 amp. So again, we go back to 14104, sub rule one, and it tells me that I'm allowed to go up to the next available size when selecting an overcurrent device. So at table 13, we would select a 90 amp overcurrent, meaning that this right here is a 90 amp overcurrent. So our question for our 72 amp non-continuous load, we end up selecting a number four gauge conductor from the 75 degree column based off lowest termination temperatures and we end up choosing a 90 amp overcurrent to protect that number four gauge conductor. Hopefully that helps. As I said, next time we'll take a look at what a continuous calculation question looks like, which changes things up a bit. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.